Communities across the country and here in West Michigan are still feeling the impacts following the events one year ago. We are now joined by Melinda Sassi, Grand Rapids Second Ward City Commissioner. Commissioner, thanks for being with us. We appreciate your time. Thanks for the invitation. Well, let's talk about over the past year, what, what are some of the changes that the commission has made and maybe some areas that you think the city still needs to work on? Yeah, so this is, um, I'm in my second year of commission and so doing most of this virtually has been something that I never expected. But I think the focus is really on how do we move from punishment to more of a prevention models in our city. So um, we just passed our budget unanimously last week. A number of pieces that we looked at um, for the future will be looking at a co-response model, making more investments in our economic development arena, certainly in our corridor improvement authorities, um, neighborhood match funds, having cure violence come. Um, we have an RFP out for that. That's on the local level, but also nationally, we can't forget that we're also in a national moment as well, where, um, you know, we haven't, there hasn't been a passage of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, and some other pieces that I think would continue to look at um, the issues that we faced back one year ago today um, from a systemic level. And how do you think that some of the, you know, what stemmed from the civil unrest last year has impacted our community over this past year? I think that we've had to sit in that tension. I think the report that uh, I watched as I was prepping gave a good uh, example of that there wasn't just a one, it wasn't two ways, it wasn't binary. There were many feelings going on. One of the business owners talked about you know, feeling unsafe, feeling why were we, you know, it sense that we're targeted and also saying this is what I support as a business owner. So it's been a feeling of, of fluid feelings as well as needing to heal, needing to make sure that we are not just talking to each other, really challenging one another to say how could our community and how could Grand Rapids look, you know, different? How do we make sure more people are experiencing the growth and prosperity that is occurring here? What do you feel like is some of the immediate issues that need to be tackled by the commission, the city, uh, as we move forward? So I think one that we'll tackle here quickly, and, and we'll talk about this next week, Tuesday, is how we're going to spend uh, the American Rescue Plan dollars. Some of it certainly will have to go to the shortfall as it relates to the loss of income tax here in the city. We've talked about that quite a bit. And also specifically those dollars um, have parameters, but really to rebuild back so things that I'm excited to talk about are investments in our housing fund. Um, we know that housing is a, it's, it's affordability and availability in this community, and it's an entire continuum, as well as um, things like a co-response model that I had mentioned before. Um, more and more I have business owners who are saying their employees are asking for alternatives to what would be traditional policing to support um, individuals in our city who are dealing with a mental health crisis, a domestic violence crisis. And I think we, we have to make sure that we follow that method uh, very succinctly with individuals who understand behavioral health, mental health in this community. And I think we have a variety of partners that we're gonna be able to work with. Wonderful, Melinda, well, thank you so much for your time this morning. We really appreciate it.